Hello, Anselm Griffin here again with another YouTube tutorial featuring MATLAB. Today we're looking at medical image segmentation using SegNet, which is a convolutional neural network. Just to say this work is not mine. You can see there in the HTML uh, blue underline there, there's the web address and it's by K Otsuka. I hope I've given the man his correct pronunciation. So. We're going to use the CNN and there's a simple example that I've taken from a, an, an authorised website. We have cows and we, we want background cows sky. So I want to use the CNN to do that. Okay. So we just close all, clear everything and delete uh, the current parallel pool. And we're also going to be segnet is based on VGG sixteen, which is a VGG sixteen is a convolutional neural network pre-trained, and you may need to download that to your own machine. MATLAB said it was installed, but I had to download it myself. Next thing up is we want to load up the um, images, so. There we are. And, yeah, so we have the image there and we've loaded them up. And there is one example, just one image. And we have the white background, the red blood cells and the parasitic purpley blue cells. So we want to be able to pick out the, the three classes by using the convolutional neural network on our 16 images. So to do that, we need the ground truth. So we need in advance to take uh, an image, label the background, label the red blood cell and label the parasitic blood cell. Okay, so there we are. So we just have image labor. Now, we call the image labeler here, and you could do it yourself with your own mouse. But the example here, you, you can do that if you want. ROI is region of interest label, and you can, but there's no need to do that. Because, scrolling on a little bit, MATLAB provided in this example, or K provided in this example, uh, area, you know, the areas were selected already for you. So there's the three classes to find. And the, the, the you know, cells were taken already for the background, the red blood cells and the parasitic blood cells, you know, using the ROI detector. So there we are, that's a label there using CMAP and there's a supporting function which is given much later on in this tutorial where you can see how to get that image up. Uh, we're just given a count there of the background, the parasitic and the ordinary blood cells. And there's a bar graph of it and you can see that the, the amount of pixels for the blood parasites is quite small and this gives rise to another problem which we're going to have to deal with. Okay. And even though there's only 16 images here, it takes quite a long while for this to run. So we're going to resize the images. And by resizing the images, we should re remove the computational overload. So we're going to, there are 16 images, 95% are for our training, and 1% is for testing. So 15 for training and one for testing. We're going to create the, the FCN, the, the fully convolutional network, fully convoluted network, I should say. So, and then we're going to reweight them there and we reweight them so as to try and get a more accurate answer. there's yeah there's the labels there 
now we're going to start using um, the FCN but before we do that we want to make it a bit more robust so MATLAB has this command image stat augmenter so you could rotate scale translate and this one here we're just doing a bit of translation in the X and Y and a bit of rotation so just to make things slightly more awkward or a better test okay we start the training and this takes quite an amount of time and I did that that was 10 epochs and a learning rate of 0.001 and that took quite a while you can see I recorded on the 30th of August and just under an hour there and the accuracy is around 50% and there's the loss given there now I couldn't run this in lifetime so what I did then was you see just 10 there learning rate point one, 10 epochs learning rate point one. so the learning rate is crude and there's for 10 epochs there at the top image learning rate point one and the loss then I did 300 epochs and a learning rate of 0.1 and you can see it's almost sinusoidal that's because the learning rate is a bit crude and then I did 300 epochs and a learning rate of 0.001 and things are much smoother but the accuracy isn't you know anything to write home about There we are. Now let's compare it. Remember, we had 15 training and one test. So here's the test. And there we have the, the test with the findings overlaid on it. And that bright green is not good news. Okay, so that's where we found the mismatch. So we use the jacquard function here to get some metrics out, which we'll look at in a second. And the IOU will explain the IOU. It's under blood parasites. There's the IOU. We'll explain that in a second. So there's the IOU and the BF. Okay. So... So just try and blow that up a little bit there. So we have we have the mean accuracy there and the mean IOU. Okay, and IOU just there, just about two thirds of the way down the screen, is intersection over union. Okay, so you know it's a set theory that you might have learned in the secondary school, and as a rough rule of thumb. An IOU of 0.5 is good, and obviously under 0.5 is not so best, or not, not the best. And the BF score measures how close the predicted boundary of an object matches the ground truth boundary. And the BF scores of action. Go on. So there's the IOUs there. Just see it. There's the IOUs and and just there is the mean bf score so here yeah, we said for the iou is 0 0.5 and okay some good and not so good there's some more supporting functions that were used back there might have gone a little fast like pixel color pixel labeled color bar they were used you know previously in can't remember on page two or page three and there's another function cmap so that's color map and we're using for the blood smear color map and there's a resized blood smear remember the images were very large so we had to resize them okay so hope that helps a little and thanks very much for listening